My favorite thing, and one is like when I map the Sphinx. Every day, I, I didn't know whether I'd be able to map the entire Sphinx uh, statue, because I mean, it's 72 meters long, you know, it's something like uh, more than 20 meters tall. But every day I captured another part of it, like the paw and every brick-sized stone on the right paw, and then the left paw. And I was, I, I was freezing in a line drawing, in a map, what it was. I was a good student at AUC. I stayed and took my degree from AUC in anthropology. I thought it would be meaningful to study anthropology in a foreign, you know, in a non, what to me was a foreign environment. But I spent every waking moment I could on the Giza Plateau, trying to understand it. Change is so rapid, and it's ever important that we save as much information as we can about the past to know where we're going tomorrow. The kind of archaeology that my organization does and that we teach to young Egyptian archaeologists really didn't exist. We're, we do archaeology, we're more looking for the anthropology of the ancient Egyptians. So for example, for 35 years, I've directed a team that is excavating the city where the pyramid builders lived. It's about 400 meters south of the Sphinx. Um, nobody thought there was anything there because it just looked like the low desert and then people from the riding stables were taking the clean sand and putting it on the floor of the stables. But very few people realized that underneath all this sand that's being turned over are the very hard, compact, mud or clay of a mud brick city. We've taught maybe 300 or more young inspectors working for inspectorates all over Egypt. But the point I want to make is that the motto of our field school is we are not looking for things. We're looking for information.